Chicago and the Philippines. A comprehensive review of the week's special community events, featuring many exciting personalities handled by the most professional Chicago Philippine Reports TV staff. Good afternoon and welcome to Chicago Philippine Reports TV, still the number one in all the Filipino shows in the Midwest. And I'm Joe Mauricio. Today we have all the top stories from Chicago and the Philippines. We also have some our segment host, Veronica, interesting interviews with Melody Rabor Deason, our Health Matters host, and Joe Mauricio, myself. And I would like to introduce to you Janet Jordy, our new host from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, introducing her global inspirations interviews. We also have happening within our own Filipino community here in Chicago. All these are coming up and more from our sponsors. Please stay with us. There are now 13 people who have tested positive for COVID-19 among contacts of the man confirmed to be the first case of the new coronavirus variant in the Philippines. They include his co-passengers at Emirates Flight 332, a healthcare worker who attended to him, and his mother and girlfriend. Six more passengers of the flight are still being traced. Yung girlfriend niya initially tested negative, pero nung nag tayo, she turned positive. Okay? And the mother, uh, nung swinab siya, ang resulta niya rin ay positive. So pinadala na rin for sequencing yung kanilang mga specimen. But the Philippine Health Department can't say whether the newly infected is of the UK variant. Health spokesperson Maria Rosario Verhera explains the patient's mother had a cycle threshold value of more than 30, which means her viral load is not enough to be tested for the new variant. Nonetheless, samples have already been submitted to the Philippine Genome Center for genome sequencing. The infected patients are also under quarantine. Medyo madami kasi ang pre-nases natin ngayon sa genome sequencing as compared to the other weeks. Ngayon medyo matagal because dun sa bulk ng ano, ng mga specimens. But uh, tomorrow night, maybe, or Friday morning, we can already share with you. Experts remind the public no matter what variant becomes dominant, measures to avoid getting infected will not change, such as wearing of face masks, face shields, and maintaining physical distance. The Philippines' COVID-19 death toll surpassed the 10,000 mark Wednesday. Manila's health department also logged 1,862 new cases, bringing the country's COVID-19 tally past 505,000. The Okta Research Group said the recent increase may be attributed to the reopening of laboratories after the holidays and the increase in cases outside Metro Manila. Nung simulang bumalik na yung, ano, yung testing after the holiday, bumalik na na naman sa mga dating levels, mga nasa 2,000. Ayun. Yung, yes, yung Kaya reproduction tumaas. number, na, pero hindi naman ganun kataas actually sa ngayon. Oh. Uh, nakikita natin yung pagtaas na sa ibabang, ibabang lugar. Eh. Topping the list of areas with the most number of new cases are Zamboanga City, Davao City, and Kalinga. The city of Tugigarao was recently placed back under an enhanced community quarantine to curb a surge in COVID-19 cases. Only essential workers will be able to travel in and out of the city freely. But the local government assures residents of aid. Put assistance for them, no? At pagtulong-tulongan po namin ito together with the city and the province po. At in fact, for today po, nagpadala na rin ako sa kanila ng 500 kabans o 50 kilogram rice para makatulong po sa city. Uh, some financial assistance din po sa mga barangay. 
Bus conductor Manuel Manawat is exposed to many people in his work every day. That's why he is thankful that his company, realizing the risk of public transport, has ordered COVID vaccines for all employees. Important, important po sa amin mapabaksin dahil kami bali kami po yung naglilingkod sa ating mga bayan at tawo mga tao. Driver Julito Castro is ready to be vaccinated since he sees this as protection not only for himself but for his passengers as well. Para bumalik po yung kumpiyansa ng mga pasero at sa aking pamilya at sa aking ding sarili. Victory Liner Vice President Marivic Del Pilar says almost 3,000 workers including bus drivers and conductors and ordinary employees are covered by their order of AstraZeneca vaccines. With this, uh, magkakaroon ng confidence uh, ang mga empleyado maski ang pamilya nila na safe si tatay na magtrabaho bilang frontliner sa transport industry. The company admits it continues to suffer from all the ill effects of the pandemic since there are lesser trips and passengers now. But Del Pilar says vaccination of workers will encourage people to travel again and trust the public transport sector. Paano magkakakumpiyansa yung mananakay natin kung takot sila na sumakay ng bus? So kung at least makontrol natin yung isang aspeto na safe naman sa terminal, safe naman sa bus, uh, babalik din yung mga mananakay. According to the Provincial Bus Operators Association, there are also other bus companies that have reserved vaccines from AstraZeneca. But other bus companies reeling from the pandemic have no budget for vaccines. There are also transport workers who do not want to be inoculated. Pag-isipan po mabuti dahil mahirap eh. Bakit? Eh, katulad nga nung sa ibang basa, eh, di ba may mga namatay na nga? Oo naman. Oo, oh, kasi marami akong taong nakakasalang mo haraw-haraw eh. Maka ma maawaan ako. Ako hindi. Hindi <laughs> na. Undecided pa, sir. Okay. Siyempre sila muna, bago kami. Iwan po, parang, parang hindi po. <laughs> Ayan po, parang takot ako. For Jeepneys, Pasa Mazda President Obit Martin says he is willing to pay for the vaccines of around 100 drivers of modern Jeepneys. Do naman sa mga Pasa Mazda members, eh palagay ko eh, kailangan eh, pasagutin na ng mga driver, ng operator, yung kanilang mga bakuna. Other operators who cannot afford will have to wait for the free vaccination of the national or local government units. Via Times, vital news, vibrant views for the Filipino-Asian communities in Chicago. Via Times, for your most interesting and exciting reading and your party coverages. Via Times has very interesting columnists. You name it, Via Times has it. Law, Filipino news, dentistry, immigration, humor, serious opinions, health, beauty, mysticism, bata corner, showbiz, and intelligent written editorials. Call Via Times at 773-866-0811. Maganda hapo po sa inyong lahat ng welcome to Veronica's segment of the show. Today, I have a very interesting guest. We're interviewing David Semrad, the CEO of Kindness. And now we're going to be hearing about the Kindness and more about Kindness a little later. And now uh, David is from um, Dallas, Texas. Is it? Uh, uh, we are actually based in California, in Venice. California. Okay, but the headquarter of uh, of Kindness is where? It, it is in California and Venice. That's where uh, we have the most of the team. All right, very good. Welcome to our show. Thank and, you. Uh, I invited you here today because this is the first time I've heard about the Kindness. Kindness is a very good organization. It's a it's an organization online um, that is uh, for fundraising campaigns. And uh, David will explain it to us uh, more about it later. Hi, David. Welcome to our show. And uh, I'm really honored the CEO of uh, Kindness. You're here to talk to us about Kindness. Uh, first time to hear about this organization or what would you call it? It is an organization is for fundraising for nonprofits and uh, how how did you found uh, kindest well first of all thank you for having me um it's an honor to be on your show 
Um, how we came to to about uh, with this idea is uh, we've been in software development for about 14 years, my co-founder Holly uh, and I, and uh, uh, one day she invited me for a fundraiser. And um, what I have seen when she asked me to donate money is the technology was very very subpar. Uh, it wasn't really mobile optimized, and it was really hard to donate. So what we have thought is uh, we could create something extremely easy. You know, it is not it is not very easy for nonprofits to keep up with the technology because uh, uh, nonprofits have been amazing with uh, tech, with like historically with organizing events and bringing people together. But the shift to online has been very difficult. So we realized we need to help them with that and create a very very simple platform that allows any nonprofit organization to create very very compelling campaigns that convert at a higher rate. Very interesting. And um, uh, how many um, how many members or staff do you have? Uh, we have about twenty people at this moment. And um, what really fascinates me about Kindness is that it says here that uh, Kindness never takes a cut from any donation. How do you do that? Uh, that's correct. We we looked at all the industry standard ways of monetizing. Uh, the software for nonprofits, and uh, we didn't really feel good about taking cut from donations because uh, nonprofits are very often measured by how much money they spend on the mission and how much money they spend on the fundraising cost. So we wanted to make it easier for them and uh, decided uh, to not to take a cut from donations, but rather we give donors an option to give us an optional tip. And uh, I'm happy to report that we have over 80% of donors giving us actually a tip. So that's how we fund our operations. All right, something really different. But anyway, uh, well, it is saying here in your uh, article that um, in spite of COVID, of the, of the pandemic, your organization uh, raised more money for, from donations in 2019. How? That's how how did it um, how did it happen that way? Because so, so many people have financial problems to be thinking of donating, but uh, this one, uh, how did you do that? We I want to know. I want to hear. Sure, you know it's interesting when there is a, a global crisis. What happens is that the overall donations usually go down a little bit, but since we are focused on entry-level donors, like donations under $1,000, those donations usually go up. And the reason for that is that there, there's way, uh, way more people who actually care about helping others. And uh, when um, COVID hit uh, the US in March and April this last year, we've, we've seen a huge spike in donations. Um, our donations were, were over 50% over regular months. And um, the same thing happened with Black Lives Matter. The same thing happened with the elections. So there was a lot of things actually that happened last year. And what we know is that people care. People want to help. They want to support uh, other people who need their money. And it was really nice to just uh, to just see that reflect on our platform. All right. Oh, let's talk about my state, the state of Illinois because I know you have data of um, different, uh, you know, of the 50, 50 states here in the USA. Uh, how did the state of Illinois do in, uh, in contributions or donations? Well, in Illinois, we've seen about a 29% year over year uh, increase in donations, which tells us that uh, people in Illinois are extremely, um, extremely giving um, last year. Very good. So uh, comparing to other states, it's doing well. Uh, yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, it was one of the, the best, uh, best states when it comes to uh, how um, uh, charitable donations reflected last year. Are you looking forward to, um, to better outlook for Kindness this year, 2021? Uh, you know, the reason why we have chosen this uh, business model where 
we don't take cut from donations, but we rely on the generous of donors is um, because we want to be really vested in the success of our organizations. And uh, what we know is the, the better we optimize the software and the more money we help nonprofit organizations raise, the more successful we can also be as an organization. So we are really happy that um, we have so many cool features and improvements planned for this year. And we really believe that um, with the way how the human mindset is shifting towards helping others and giving, we really think that uh, this year is going to be even stronger than uh, 2020. Do you have uh, any other new programs for nonprofits? We do. Um, we do. Um, we we actually have seen a lot of usage on the platform when it comes to communication between the nonprofit organizations and donors. And we built this really cool community portal where nonprofits uh, and the people working there can interact with donors real time. Uh, they can, um, uh, instead of just sending newsletters and strictly informing donors about the progress, they can actually break down uh, how the funds that they have raised have been used. They can uh, display exactly how your 20 or $100 help uh, to move the needle. And they can also directly uh, communicate with the donors. So we are really proud that uh, we are able to take the offline world of community building that nonprofits have been amazing at. Uh, we can we can take it online and recreate this kind of community when uh, there is less of an opportunity for offline events and uh, gatherings because of the pandemic. Around how many um, nonprofit organizations or groups do you have uh, so far? We have, have over two thousand. We have over so two thousand. Uh, we have over two thousand nonprofit organizations on the platform. From big to small nonprofit organizations, right? Yeah, we have organizations that started literally a month ago and uh, haven't even started raising money and are just gearing up. And we have organizations like the Boys and Girls Club of San Francisco that uh, raises around $20 million a year. Okay, Eva, uh, we, uh, we have viewers in our community that are watching right now, and some of them are. Uh, uh, members of nonprofit organizations, how would they be able to get you the kindness to help them out? For sure. Um, the good news is that we can work with literally any nonprofit organizations as long as they're an approved 501c3 charity. And they can just go to uh, www.kindest.com and uh, we have a free sign up. It costs nothing, and some of our team members will reach out and help them to set up the campaigns. Great, terrific. Okay, I'll, um, one last word uh, before we sign off, David. I, I'm i going to tell you right now that I really enjoy talking to you uh, and learning about kindness. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed being on this show and meeting you, Veronica. Okay, terrific. And uh, thank you, David. Samarad for, uh, for gracing our show today. Maraming salamat. That is thank you in Filipino. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yes. All right. Thank you. So, thank you. Maraming salamat sa iyong um, uh, guest sa aking program. And uh, you enjoy the rest of your weekend. Maganda hapo po sa inyo lahat, ako po si Veronica. And enjoy this interview of mine with these two young kids, brilliant kids, and uh, they will be uh, our future leaders here in our country. Hi, welcome to our show, Manny, and London. Hello. Okay, today you will be talking about the mikvah challenge. Oh, what is a mikvah challenge? So for the Bigfoot challenge in our class, um, the assignment was to make a 30 second video um, 
saying what you think um, the president and the vice president should be doing in their first 100 days in office, like what policies should be made and what problems around the world are important to you. In your video, what uh, policies uh, uh, did you work on? Important policies that our politicians should do to our country. Um, I chose climate change and I chose, um, I, uh, I had said that the vice president and um, Mr. President himself, they should um, form alliances with other countries so they can battle the, um, so they can battle climate change together because it's a global issue. It's not just a national issue. I chose COVID-19 because it's something that we live day to day basis. And it's something that has just came out of nowhere last year and it limits, limits us a lot from things that we used to do. And it's just something that I feel like they need to take action in. Okay, why, why did you join the Mikva Challenge? What, the, what is it that you want to impart to the youth out there? Uh, I, I decided to join one because it was a class assignment. That's where we first heard of it was from AP Gov. And they, they gave us the assignment to do the video. And I decided that mine was COVID because it's interesting to talk about. And I feel like us as young people need to give our voice out more because some adults don't really know how it feels like to be a youth living through these conditions. And I feel like our voices need to be heard. And if we all join as one group and the Mikva challenge gave us the opportunity to talk as one group. And I feel like it would be the best way to spread it out. Okay, uh, well, London. Same as Emmanuel, this was an assignment for our uh, AP government class, but um. This was mostly about, um, basically about the youth, pri uh, what the youth prioritizes that the president and um, Madam Vice President should do. Um, I feel like it, um, I feel like climate change is very important because we have all these issues. We have social justice, we have Medicare, Medicaid, and all these things. But I feel like we won't be able to advance in those things for a very long time if we, as ourselves, are not combating what's destroying our world right now. Like what, 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 what would be the point of Medicaid and Mer Medicare if the world as we know it is being destroyed? It won't be, it won't be habitable anymore. Very good issues. Um, all right, when you grow up in the future, what, you got, what do you want to do to contribute to the community? If COVID's gone by then, then anything could happen in the future and maybe I feel joining groups based on what you believe is right could even help you and try to help other people so in the future I would also like to do something like the Mikva challenge and join groups of people who have a certain opinion and who want to voice it and if COVID's still around I feel like I would still do the same procedures that I do today. London. Um, I would say how I could contribute to my community um, when it comes to the climate change is one, staying up to date on my research about it, um, pinpointing the specific causes and things that we humans do that has a direct impact on the earth, and then doing my best to try to come up with ideas and things to um, actually like make like different resources that we won't have to use to damage the earth like such as um, electricity and solar radiation and things like that. And I can also do what I'm doing now, which is making um, videos to reach out to the president and um, the vice president and um, making known to them that this is a very real problem that needs to get a handle on. Okay, now uh, for your, um, still for your future, how, what kind of a profession do you want to enter when you grow up uh, later on in your future? Uh, do you want to enter politics or do you want to pursue other professions? So me, uh, right now, I've 
a bit of a mixture of things. I would like to mainly become a computer programmer or computer engineer and learn like coding and all that, which is in politics, but I would like to somewhat have a bit of knowledge of politics during that time as well. Or I would like to become a doctor in, we'll figure that out. It's right now it's mainly becoming a computer programmer for me. So it's not really too much politics and more of technology for the future and stuff like that. Good. Zander? Um, for right now, um, I'm into music a lot. I like to sing. I like to write. Um, I'm learning to play instruments and things like that. So um, I'd say being a composer or being a singer or um, somewhere in that uh, music theory realm. Um, I also, I'm not sure if I'll have much to do with politics, but I will most definitely be making my voice known in um, certain issues. And it's like, even though I feel like my work field won't be around politics, I feel like I'll always be saying something about it. And then I also want to go get my theology degree, but it's still out in the open right now. Great, terrific. You, both of you, of course, want to have your voices heard in the community that you serve. And I like that. Okay. Now, before we sign off, uh, what um, what can you uh, give us an advice to the uh, youth out there to uh, about the uh, Mikba challenge? Uh, my advice would be to all the youth out there is to always stay on top of doing your research. There are lots of opinions. There's lots of different kinds of news is out there, and things can get um, choked up. It's kind of like a game of telephone. You know, what you hear first is not what you're gonna hear at the end of the line. So I feel like we should all, even as we're growing into adults, keep up with doing our research and sticking to the facts of the situation, so we can clearly make those decisions before our um, feelings and emotions get involved. Uh, you're a brilliant kid, London. How about you, Manny? <laughs> I've, my advice would be to not be afraid to ask for help or be afraid to do research and things that you are confident in because sometimes you get nervous or get afraid or confused about certain things and you don't know where your standpoint is in, and you can ask for someone who knows more than you to help you figure that thing out. Whatever you wanna do, whatever you feel, if you need confirmation, ask someone who knows a lot about the thing as a, for the mikvah challenge, do more with joining groups or following, looking around doing research about different communities that you feel like you wanna join, do something do something to let your voice be heard is basically the thing. Very good advice. And um, well, guys, I you really impressed me. You are both brilliant. And um, thank you for gracing our show, Manny or Emmanuel Sebastian, London Johnson. And uh, both of them go to Gwendolyn Brooks College Prep. And you're just 10th grader students. Wow, you have brilliant minds and uh, congratulations. And thank you for blessing our show today. Okay, mm -hmm. Penny and London, thank you. And Salamat, that is thank you in our language, Tagalog. And good luck to both of you. Bye. Bye, thank you. You too. Bye. Bye. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Back to Your portion of the show. And I'm John Mauricio. This afternoon, this Christmas holidays, I have one very important person as my guest, and no other than Edith Argente. Edith Agente is a very popular, dynamic community leader, a Hall of Famer, and also a movie shaker and a retired engineer from Navastar. 
so, that's true. So, how do you, are you spending your, uh, your retirement, Edith? Well, Joe, a retirement has been great. Uh, we have been traveling a lot, but this year we are really grounded. Uh, we only went to the Philippines in January, and in February and March we went to the Amazon River um, and the Amazon rainforest. After that, you know, the cruise line told us you are probably the last people on any cruise ship anywhere because everything is being grounded. So, you know, we, we have been at home for the last um, nine months or so. We are loving it because our grandchildren are nearby and they come to our place, uh, you know, every, almost every day. And we love it. You know, when so we, we are trying to be very careful. Yeah, you know, but the uh, pre pre COVID nineteen era, you were traveling all over the world. What 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 country in the world ha ha you haven't visited yet? Do you know? Uh, uh, you know, I've always wanted to go to Iran, Iraq, uh, Afghanistan, and all that. But I, under, but I understand the only way I could go there is to sign up uh, for uh, with the military. Unfortunately, I'm 75 years old, and you know what use are they going to have of a 75 year old woman? So I'm I won't be able to visit those countries. What, what do you mean you're you're only? But yeah, I wish I could visit. You know, uh, you, you have a lot left, you know, for the Argentas and 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 Nestor keeping you company, uh, make you younger. Make you a lot like have you been back to Iloilo? Oh oh definitely. He's been taking good care of me as I do of him. So, you know, we take care of each other and uh, I still like him after all these years. Uh, and uh, so we, we travel together all the time. Is that a disclaimer? <laughs> I still like him. <laughs> <laughs> He he's a very he is a very easy person to like and love. Uh, you know, yes. I'm more of a challenge to him, but he definitely is somebody um, I treasure very much. Do you, do you play golf but, uh, with 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 Nestor? Uh, yes, yes. We actually last January we played golf in the Philippines, um, and which we do every year. Um, I'm I'm a very bad golfer, but I love being out in the golf course. You know, now everybody stuck, you know, in your, your home and things like that. Uh, yes. What do you do besides baby, babysitting? <laughs> what do I do be besides babysitting? Babysitting, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, the problem is I eat and then I rest a little bit and I eat again and then I rest and I eat again. So that's my problem. I'm, I'm gaining a little weight. Um, but otherwise, um, you know, we, we keep in touch with friends and relatives. Uh, we actually, in our organization, like Samahan Sabario, we have uh, monthly uh, Zoom meetings, uh, and it's really been fun. Uh, we plan our projects. As a matter of fact, one time, um, our group, you know, masking, socially distanced and all that. We were able to go to a grocery store and buy a lot of stuff for, um, the, uh, for the charities in our local uh, churches. So we continue to figure out how to help uh, and it's been, it's re been really good. So, so what, you know, with the, with the organization like Samahan Sabario, what are, what, what's your plan for Christmas? Do you have any anything good thing for the community? Um, we don't have really anything, especially now that you know we're told to lock down. Um, we we already had our, had our Christmas party on December five at least, uh -huh. um, and so right now um, I think what we do is we just contribute. Um, for example, uh, in one of our churches. Uh, churches here we have um, the Saint Vincent de Paul where they um, you know they buy stuff and they give it to uh, the uh, uh, to the uh, um, houses for the old folks and so we, we we just contribute that's all we can do at this time 
you know, we, I wish we could go out, buy some stuff. Um, of course, in our church also, we bring, um, we have a, a packet here of uh, things that we are going to bring, you know, like um, uh, uh, coats, sweaters, uh, small heaters uh, that we go to, um, we, we give to the church for distribution. Yeah, it, during its past two, three months, uh, we have a series of typhoons visiting the Philippines. Did you get involved with that? I think our uh, organization did. Um, I, I think uh, Samahan did, yeah. Yeah, that's what I uh, I would like to hear, you know, because these people in the Philippines are really suffering, not only with the COVID pandemic, it's mm -hmm. also suffering from the typhoon. That's so very true, yeah. Yeah, we have we have a lot of relatives there, and uh, so we we've been uh, sending balik bayan boxes. We've been oh, uh, sending money by Zoom, uh, sending money by you know what what other uh, uh, Western Union. So we, we've been trying to help because you know it's very hard. It's very hard for everybody. We we keep in contact. We we. Uh, communicate with them by Zoom, and that's when they tell us what uh, what they need, and we try to accommodate. You were you were retired from the Do you do you visit the uh, the company uh, once in a while and say hi to you, your old friends? Oh, of course, yes, yes. Um, huh. I still have a lot of friends there, a lot of staff that are still there, and so. Uh, they update me uh, with what's going on. And of course, I also go to the website because they, that's where you find out what's going on. So again, you know, our time is up, uh, Edith. And I, okay. wish, I wish everybody Merry Christmas, not only in your family, but everybody in the world. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I suppose that that also includes Peso. Yeah, Peso is another love of ours. Uh, yeah, we are. But we miss the, the peso uh, uh, dinner dance. Uh, that is true. And that usually comes a week after um, the Hall of Fame. Fame. Yes. Yes, yes. So, Hall of Fame. so uh, maybe. So we'll, I, hope you, I hope you and Vero are doing very, very well. Oh, yes. Yeah. We are. Thank you so yeah. much. We and, love you. We love you. Know that. Yeah. And, and, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you for. Uh, keep keeping us uh, uh, informed by sending us a copy of Via Times every month. We look forward to that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right. Maraming maraming po salamat and I hope to see you again next week. Merry Christmas, everybody. Good day. This is Janet Jordi at Global Inspiration, where you need to be seen need to be heard and be an inspiration to the world. We have a special guest this week. She's a dear friend of mine and she created doors and walls. So the opportunities offered in front of her right now is because she furthered his, her studies. She went back to Drake University and she is now a certified public manager. She is also the founder and currently the executive director of the Filipino American Society in Iowa. And she's also the found, one of the founding members and currently the treasurer of another nonprofit organization, the Filipino Latino Coalition. She is a woman who has a very dynamic and outstanding leadership skills. And she is also passionate with volunteer spirit and a strong sense of community service. And the highlight of her journey is when she was awarded with a national, and when we say national, it's all over America, a Hall of Fame last year for the public service and community leadership. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so proud to have her this afternoon as a guest of Global Inspiration. Ladies and gentlemen, again, it is Luisita Donna Thompson. Thank you very much, Donna. Hello, hello, Janet. Thank you so much for such an amazing introduction. So when I met Donna last year, she was saying, you know, I have, I have my boyfriend, I have my fiance with me. And when she mentioned that I have the, my fiance with me, I, it, it touches my heart. Like, oh my gosh, another very supportive partner because we need a stronger person with us. So I am saying to you, Larry, you're so blessed. You're so lucky to have Donna. And my question is, what 
do you like most about Donna? I know you're getting married, but I know she's active in community services, but what is it that you really like about her? Oh man, I could go on forever about what I what I love about her. Uh, just strong, passionate heart. It, mm -hmm. From the moment I met her, it was it was always talking about what she could do to help serve other people and serve her community. Uh, one of the things that attracted me most to her during our first date was how much she talked about the Filipino community and how much it meant to her to to be a part of that and to to try to give back to it. Yeah. Uh, I've always I've always been attracted to the selflessness of people in general and to, to see somebody who is so selfless in her own right uh giving me back just it just it, i was awestruck from the first yeah, day yeah yeah and i i i thank you larry for accepting filipinos we might be loud we laugh a lot <laughs> we are screaming we're yelling but we have the warmest heart of all and we are very hospitable Oh, yeah. And yeah, so be, besides loving Donna with all your heart, how could you support her in her future endeavors? I know she will continue doing community service, but how do you support her besides joining her in the interview and wearing Barong? Well, the, the biggest thing is communication. You Correct. have to understand and work together to understand to to know what your next steps are going to be. Uh, when when we talked about her joining the Des Moines Leadership Council for the uh, the leadership program, you know that was something that we discussed and it really highlighting what are the benefits that are that she's going to take away from this. And that, I think that's that's what's the most important thing is to be able to openly communicate with each other to understand what are we what is she going to gain out of it. What is it going to take from us as a family? And then what does she have to give as an individual? Yeah. Uh, and then once, once you've laid out everything and you know what your next steps forward are going to be, really that's the best way to be supportive is to, to know what you're getting into. Yeah, I, I see a lot of photos and you're always there to support her. And doing this for the community service people don't understand because it's, it's very addicting you know when when they said like janet you need your help i don't have money you know like like the flood in the philippines what do i need to do so i i i sent them money but people don't understand that when you are your heart belongs to community service you are doing more than what they expect to do and just a note donna i know i see that Hall of Fame behind you. I have mine also in our living room. I'm, I'm so proud that I won of the awardee. So to Donna, this is my final question. Can you share any inspirational thought to inspirational thoughts to our viewers? Yes. So I always remember this quote from Dr. Benjamin Franklin. It's not always the role, but it is the goal. Correct. Well done is better than well said. I would like to say that don't be, I would like to say to everyone out there, don't be scared to try on new things. And it is okay to fail. I have failed many times, mm -hmm. but I do not let that to stop me for trying it again. Mm -hmm. So I encourage you to volunteer, volunteer to your community Mm -hmm. and or to make a little donations to a nonprofit organizations out there. Take advantage for all the opportunities around you. Okay. Especially with the pandemic, we need one another. So let us lend our helping a hand to those in need. Yeah. Thank you very much for saying that, Donna. Thank you for enjoining and encouraging the public, the Filipino and the Americans to volunteer. There's a lot of people who are willing to volunteer, but they do not know how to do it. Even my husband, he told me before that he wants to do a volunteer, but he doesn't know how. If you are interested or anyone of you is interested to do volunteer work, approach me. And there are a lot of people who ask me before that, what am I supposed to do to Jeanette that I want to volunteer regarding domestic abuse? And I told them that you need to be train to be a volunteer. It depends on the requirements of the nonprofit organization. Again, Larry and Donna, 
thank you very much for your time for joining us this afternoon again this is Jeanette Jordy at Global Inspiration where you need to be seen need to be heard and be an inspiration to the world thank you very much thank you Janet thank you again for having me I want to commend you Janet for all the hard work you do for our community I am so happy and proud to be included at the Chicago Filipino Asian American Hall of Fame with you and many other amazing leaders out there. Global inspiration, I am a huge fan. Thank you, thank you. God bless and mabuhay. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Thank you. We would like to welcome all of you to Baladna Jewelry. We have a very big selection of 21 karat gold jewelry imported from the Middle East, from Dubai, Saudi, and Bahrain. And we have a very big selection of diamond. We offer free financing for six months, and uh, we have a layaway system, which you can leave your stuff for three months. We repair gold, and we buy old gold. Welcome to Baladna Jewelry. Salamat Bo. Good afternoon, this is Bridget Carino Quetter bringing you this week's local news from our community. Despite 2020 being a trying year, it has not stopped Americans from helping each other. Throughout the pandemic, Americans have been donating to charitable causes in record numbers. TOP Data and Kindest conducted a data study and found that this new wave of COVID has pushed up charitable donations by 25%. So much so that 52% of Americans plan on donating more in 2021 due to COVID. According to charity expert David Semerad, CEO of Kindest, a fundraising platform, we've seen those financially unaffected come forward to make charitable contributions, often with higher donation amounts than in previous years. Some additional charity insights include charitable donations across the country have risen 25% during COVID, 52% of Americans plan to donate more in 2021, and Illinoisans donated an average of $439 to charity in 2020. The Chicago Cook Workforce Partnership hosted elected officials, community leaders, local philanthropists, and the family of a much-loved and respected Southside resident to mark the grand opening of the Chatham Education and Workforce Center, or the Center. Congressman Bobby L. Rush, Mayor Lori Lightfoot, Cook County Board President Tony Preckwinkle, Alderman Roderick Sawyer, 6th Ward, Alderman Michelle Harris, 8th Ward, Cook County Commissioner Stanley Moore, 4th District, family of the late Dr. Betty Howard, and philanthropist and investor Jessica Sarowitz of Forest Bay Partners LLC came together to mark the culmination of nearly seven years of collaboration that brought this center to life. When Dr. Howard, the beloved head of the Special Education Department at Gwendolyn Brooks College Preparatory Academy, was killed by random gunfire in May 2014, Congressman Rush led an effort to revitalize local communities gripped by violence. The center is one of many initiatives to evolve from that work. The U.S. Department of Commerce's Economic Development Administration is awarding $956,858 CARES Act Recovery Assistance Grant to Lake Superior State University, Salt St. Marie, Michigan, to purchase lab equipment to build capacity at the Center for Freshwater Research and Education. The project, to be located in a Tax Cuts and Jobs Act Opportunity Zone, will be matched with $239,215 in local funds, is expected to create 20 jobs and generate $14.2 million in private investment. This investment comes at a crucial time to help Michigan's and our nation's economy come roaring back, said Dana Gartsky, performing the delegated duties of the Assistant Secretary of Commerce for Economic Development. This project will build economic resiliency in Michigan's eastern Upper Peninsula by catalyzing new water-related industries and innovation through expanded training and research services to be provided through Lake Superior State University's 
Center for Freshwater Research and Education. The Illinois Department of Natural Resources, IDNR, and the Illinois Conservation Foundation, ICF, announced that 43 Illinois Schoolyard Habitat Action Grants have been awarded from the Fall 2020 application period. A total of $35,524.59 will be distributed. The Illinois Schoolyard Habitat Action Grant Program provides children and educators with an opportunity to increase the use of native plants in Illinois landscapes while benefiting wildlife species, said IDNR Director Colleen Callahan. By participating in these projects, students learn that their efforts can make a positive difference in the world, and they gain experience in problem-based learning by planning, developing, and maintaining the habitat. The Illinois Schoolyard Habitat Action Grant Program supports the development or enhancement of wildlife habitat on the school grounds or other public areas. Funding for the program is provided through donations to the ICF. With the state of Illinois launching multiple health care staffing contracts to increase hospital staffing, the Illinois Department of Public Health is adjusting its mitigation metrics to reflect the additional staff. With a change, Regions 8, 9, 10, and 11 will move from the most restrictive Tier T3 to Tier 2. In addition, Region 1 and 6 have met the metrics to move to Tier 1, and Regions 3 and 5 have met the metrics to return to Phase 4 of the Restore Illinois Plan. Hospital leaders and local health departments have communicated to IDPH that their primary capacity challenge is the need for additional staffing and stressed that state-facilitated staffing contracts will be critical in addressing this challenge. With the surge staffing program, IDPH and hospital leaders feel confident that metrics can safely move away from utilizing medical slash surgical bed limits to move across mitigation tiers, allowing more regions to advance. The adjustment also recognizes the substantial progress the state has made since November 20, 2020, when Tier 3 mitigations were put in place. That's all for today. Thank you for watching the news this week. This is Bridget. See you next time. See you on the next Hey, that's only thank you. Okay, I love you. Okay, I love you.
When you use less water and electricity, people notice. I can get used to that. <coughs> so can I. Take it easy. Get rebates from ComEd on select Energy Star certified appliances and find even more savings with the ComEd Energy Efficiency Program. ComEd, powering lives. We come to the portion of the show uh, wishing the good people of Chicago and Illinois and the United States of America a very happy, happy birthday. Beginning with Sally Samara, happy birthday, Evelyn Toledo, J.G. Direct, and my fellow Athenians, Manny Garcia Jr., happy birthday, Manny, and lastly, Gilda Villanueva, wishing everybody a happy, happy birthday. Thank you.